Hey, it's Josh. And Aaron. We would like your help to grow our channel. If we can grow to 8,000 subscriptions, we're gonna give you this Indominus box. The rules are simple. Subscribe to the channel now, and when we reach 8,000 subscribers, we're gonna put out a special thank you video. Everybody who comments on that video will be entered to win this Indominus box. Make sure to subscribe and hit the bell button. Will people follow? I hope so. This episode brought to you by Impending Victory, also by subscribers like you. Hey everybody and welcome to another episode of This Old 40K. Today we have a very simple project. We are going to be using our Glowforge and our design skills to make our own custom guide for our Proxon hot wire cutter. Why are we doing this you ask? So that we can take on the challenge that Terrainaholic threw down for a foam build off. I already took on DM Scotty, now I'm going to take on Terrainaholic, but I need the tools to do it. Terrainaholic has an entire studio dedicated to foam cutting. All I have is this hot wire cutter and some razor blades. So let's up our equipment and get ready for this challenge. We are going to be doing our foam build off. And now while Terrainaholic has access to an entire studio of things, particularly a bandsaw, I am going to be using the Proxon a hot wire cutter. Now I've seen online, particularly I believe Black Magic Craft, who uses a Proxon, and he has a custom laser cut guide. Now you can buy these guides, and I'm going to buy the guide. I'm gonna to link to his video and to the place where you can buy them. But since I have a laser cutter, I thought that would be a great project for me to try and build my own guide. Just like his review, I agree. There's some stability issues in this direction and it doesn't really lock. So I just wanna make a nice 90 degree surface to do some easy cuts. Now the most important thing is getting the dimensions of this piece correct on the laser cutter so that it fits in the channel super duper snug. And to do that, I'm gonna use my calibers. Uh, and the first thing that you do whenever you use calibers is I just I just changed your battery. I just uh, I took the cover off and it started working. I put the cover on and it's stop st stops stops working. Okay, so we won't use the safety cover. First thing is that when we're at the zero position, obviously we want to put it in zero. We are going to be calculating this in millimeters and then we will set our design software to millimeters as well. So it is precisely 7.5 7.8 millimeters. Our space here comes out at 7.8 millimeters. So we are definitely gonna wanna be cutting to that 7.8, maybe even 7.79 millimeters wide. Let's write that down before we forget it. The next measurement that we need is how tall it's going to be. And we are gonna do that in millimeters as well. And we are going to want it to be uh, 13 and a quarter. And we're gonna want it 27 and a half wide. And then we're gonna make it a triangle. Let's go ahead and take these measurements and put them into Illustrator and then get on over to the Glowforge. I feel like it's hard to make designing an Illustrator fun to watch, but we'll do this, I guess, as quickly as possible. Now, first of all, we wanna change our units to millimeters and uh, the first thing that we're going to do is we need to test the most important thing is the piece that fits into the channel. That's obviously the most important thing. It's 7.8 millimeters square and it's going to be, let's say, let's say 15 millimeters long. I'm more worried about the width than the depth. So I'm not gonna try to glue two pieces together. So I know that my sheet is not like we're not going to make a square, we're going to make a rectangle. So we are just going to lay out our rectangle and obviously don't want 88 millimeters. We want 15 and we want our height to be 7.8. And that just seems, that just seems wrong. You know why that's wrong? 
because it's not millimeters. This one should be centimeters. This one should be 15 centimeters. Silly. Silly, 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 silly person. So 15 centimeters by 7.8 millimeters. And we're gonna see if that fits in that channel really well. This is what we're gonna save and this is what we're gonna cut. This is probably the most important piece. We might have to fine tune this, but hopefully it will work. Our test piece is done and uh, we are gonna check the Glowforge's accuracy. I'm gonna reset our calipers to zero. Remember, we're looking for 7.8 millimeters and we got so 7.6. So I believe that that's because the acrylic melts a little bit. And when we put it in, it's a little loose. It's not exactly quite what we want. So we're gonna move from 7.8 to eight millimeters wide, and we're gonna cut it again. Um, and hopefully that'll be the sweet spot. So here we go, we got the second one. Uh, we set it at eight and it came out at 7.8 nine as compared to the first one which came out at 7.63 it's actually slightly too big slightly too big so we're gonna cut one more as expected third time is the charm it fits it goes in nice it's snug this one's perfect we're gonna mark it three yes no no and we are gonna put these over here. Three yes, let's design the rest of it and get it cut and assembled. Um, and we will have this small project done so that we can get to our challenge against Terrainaholic. Oh, you're going down Terrainaholic. pieces are assembled and now we're going to make sure that it is sitting squarely underneath the top of the machine and it fits quite nicely which is very nice next thing that we need to do is remove all of the paper from all the different pieces which is sometimes fun and sometimes not so fun then we're going to test fit them and they fit absolutely snug it's amazing it's perfect i can't believe it literally literally no gap now i am using a framing square which holds things at a 90 degree angle in order to clamp these two pieces together and make sure that they are going to sit exactly square then i'm going to apply some glue and let it sit in this clamping square if you don't have a clamping square buy a clamping square it, it's very useful for making things like boxes and picture frames and things like that once I have the initial glue in place I run some additional glue down the sides and I'm putting in my additional supports and those supports are also cut to be square so they will make sure that in the end everything is that's right you guessed it square now is the tricky part. We need to attach the rail to the bottom of our guide and we need to make sure that it is going to line up perfectly. We are using the calipers to measure the exact distance that it's going to need to sit from the end and then we are going to use the calipers themselves to scratch a perfectly straight line at the exact right distance as our guide mark so that we can glue on our rail. Lastly, we carefully super glue our rail onto our guide, keeping it perfectly on that line, and we are going to clamp it down while it glues just to make sure that everything is perfect. Note that we are not using accelerator or kicker on this project at all. While it does make super glue dry faster, it also makes it expand, get hot, and become more brittle. We have the original, which has some issues even when it's locked down. It's not the most stable. You see if you get it, even if you close it, you know, yes, you can get these cool angles and stuff, but uh, if we just want to do our 45 degree cuts, we now have this bad boy and we can line it up and push it down. And now we have whoop, perfect, perfect cutting edge. And we can slide it back, pick another spot and just put it down and go ahead and do some cuts. So I am extremely satisfied with this. Let's get this bad boy hooked up 
uh, and do some test cuts. Here we go. Turn it on, setting it to level four. The recommendation for the thickness of foam that I have. I have a nice straight edge to hold against. It's very strong and secure and Amazing. Perfect cut. Ha <laughs> ha! That's exciting. I can shut it off, lift it up, make an adjustment, turn it back on. And there we go. Easy peasy. We are ready for our foam challenge against, you know it, Terrainaholic. Well, thank you so much everybody for joining us. I hope you enjoyed that smaller project. I think it worked out great and we are gonna be able to do some amazing styrofoam cutting, not just for the competition that's coming up, but just in general. Once again, there are pre-made packets that work much better for the Proxon, people who have thought about allowing you to be able to cut pretty much any angle and any shape. I learned about it from Black Magic Craft. So there is a link to Black Magic Craft's channel as well as a link to where you can buy all of this stuff pre-made. But I enjoyed trying to make my own and I might try to continue to make my own, even though I think I'm just gonna buy a bunch of it. Remember as always to like and subscribe, hit that bell button so you never miss an update. If you want to take your patronage to the next level, check out our Patreon in the notes below. And as always, we'll see you on the table.